Okay, Jeff, uh, this is my uh, Cal 39. It's a 40-year-old boat, mm -hmm. and the, uh, it's a great sailing boat, but the electrics are a problem right now, so um, I'm looking forward to an electric audit. All right, thanks for having me on board. I appreciate it. We'll uh, have a chance to look at it, review what we see, and then uh, make some recommendations on what's the best next steps for you to tackle. Great. Um, boat is about 40 years old. Um, pretty common. Uh, in sort of setup, there's good and there's bad. There's a few good things right away that I'm seeing. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that on your boat, I'm not seeing any wing nuts on the batteries. Um, that's one of the things that's commonly seen. Uh, people buy batteries with wing nuts. They think if they came with it, it's probably a good idea. But the reality is a boat has tons of vibration and you really don't want to have any wing nuts on a boat, period. Uh, also noticing that actually you've got uh, lock washers underneath uh, pretty much every one of the nuts, which is great. And so that's really good news. So you've got really good connections. Um, and I'm seeing both on the house and also on the engine battery. Commonly, especially group 31s or 24 or 27 are going to come with wing nuts and people are going to have uh, wing nuts on those. So that's the first thing. The next thing I'm seeing on this uh, battery bank, which I really like, is that you've got four golf carts here wired in 12 volts. So you can see there's parallel jumpers and each pair of uh, golf carts is wired in series. And what you'll notice is the positive and negatives are coming at opposite ends of the battery. And that's going to be essential to keep the batteries uh, or have the batteries charge and discharge evenly. So like that. Um, one thing I'm seeing right at the battery level is this terminal on the positive is starting to be pretty stacked. You look at the connections that you have and you actually have... Uh, one, two, three, and four. Now this is uh, misleading. It looks like it's a connection, but it's actually a temperature sensor. And it's a temperature sensor that's connected to your external regulator. And we'll talk about that later. And realistically, it doesn't need to be there. It, it can actually be on, ideally should be on a negative connection. And so it could easily be brought back to this one here, uh, considering that there's not much on this connection point. The other thing too that you'll notice on that connection, which is really interesting is, and this is essential, is the stacking of terminals. Stacking of terminals is a little bit like a pyramid. You put the larger blocks on the bottom, and as you go higher and higher, they're smaller and smaller blocks. In this instance, you can see there's a large gauge lug, and in between that, you've got actually smaller gauges that are impeding the current from or creating a resistance between the battery and this larger cable, which actually feeds your positive distribution for your whole boat. So. An easy thing here to remedy would be to simply undo this connection and actually stack always from largest connector to smallest connector. So that the smallest connector, like something like this, which is a gauge 14, is not going to be carrying all the current that's going through this large gauge wire right over here. The other thing I'm noticing is this connector here is actually, you can tell, is actually runs your external regulator and it's actually unfused. So absolutely essential that this has to be fused. So that's about it. You can also notice that um, the batteries are in a container, which is great. And I'm not seeing any signs of electrolytes actually uh, on top of the battery. So that tells us that the batteries have not been overcharged or overfilled recently. Next, we're going to look at uh, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this arrangement over here, which is your negative distribution. Um, first thing I see is that you've got what's called a shunt um, right over here. And, and this shunt is basically a single choke point and it's used to measure all the current going in and out of the battery bank. So the other good news uh, that I'm seeing right off the bat is I can tell that you don't have any negative connections that are done bypassing this shunt. So all the current goes through this cable, goes up, comes out, and then feeds a, po a negative distribution, a common bus. So that's the good news is that your battery monitor, based on this setup, looks like it's actually properly wired. So you're going to have an accurate reading on your battery monitor. Now, on the negative distribution, there's some hits. There's some good stuff and bad stuff. Um, one of the concerns that I have is whenever I see a connection like this, that doesn't have heat shrink. That's for me something that I'd like to have. Like you can see some of them have them. 
right? You got a heat shrink, heat shrink, heat shrink, heat shrink. But on this connection, you don't. And on this connection here, you can see right over here, you can notice the, the, the length of the heat shrink is too short. People buy heat shrink and they try to make it last. I see some owners that cut a hinge shrink down to almost a quarter inch. You know, I'm surprised that some people don't make it only, you know, an eighth of an inch. The point, it's not a seam protector. It's really to make sure that there's no moisture that's going to creep inside underneath the insulation and get to that wire because it might be untinned. And certainly when you look at a lug like that and a, that cable, you get a sense that it's probably welding cable. And if it's welding cable, it means it's untinned. And so it's even more important, especially when you have untinned cable, to make sure that that... Like you hear on your neg on your positive, you got to make sure that you've got about two inches of heat shrink to make sure that that connection is never going to get compromised and have corrosion, which is going to cause resistance, which is going to cause voltage drop. Yeah, that's actually the uh, negative for the windlass. There so, you go. Yeah. So pretty important because uh, windlasses or any type of motors, starters, windlass, thrusters, all those devices don't die because they're badly manufactured or they're not quality products. They'll generally die for one simple reason, and it's low voltage. Lack of voltage is what causes those devices to commonly fail. So, and then the other thing too would be the stacking of terminals. You know, making take the time to make sure that the terminals are properly stacked would be something I would recommend. Um, and I'm also noticing that some of the wiring has actually non-heat shrink terminals, and then some of it has heat shrink terminals, but the heat shrink is not actually, um, a, there's no heat applied to heat shrink, and so therefore that connection, there's a heat shrink terminal there, but it's actually not currently in use, right? It's acting as a butt connector, um, but the connection is not sealed. So that would be something else that would be, that I would recommend to rectify. So that's on the negative distribution. On the positive distribution, what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of few circuits, which I really like. Um, there's a lot of what are called MRBFs. And you can actually tell this is a marine rated battery fuse. And here's a dual MRBF being used, two fuse holder. And so you've got a lot of the DC distribution that's actually fused properly to make sure that if ever there is a short, that wire is actually not going to be uh, shorted, but the fuse will blow. So, and you also notice there's a lot of spares, which I like, um, and that's really good. And um, so you, you wanna make sure, I can see there's already another connection here. Here we're talking about overall fusing, and you'll notice there's a jumper, caught my attention, leaves here, and it goes down, and it goes right down into this um, fuse holder right here. And it says H2O 40 amp. You'll notice the fuse is actually orange, and you can see a lot of the blades off that fuse. Notice below the orange. The, the orange itself, the blades on the orange are maybe only about yay long, maybe half an inch. And right now you can see that we're seeing at least a quarter of an inch or even more of that blade. So that means that that blade contact is actually only partially done. So it's really important that when you use those type of fuses, you actually jam that fuse all the way down. And what's confusing is the connections that are done need to be unscrewed with because they're actually um, there's terminals underneath and those Phillips terminals need to be undone so you can jam the fuse all the way in and then you actually retighten both the both sides both the load side and the line side of that fuse so that the fuse can actually be brought all the way down yeah that's why I, I jammed it in because I couldn't I didn't that's right loosen them off yeah so that's common um, the other thing too you're noticing is over here we've got what's called an ACR that's called an automatic combiner relay. And you'll notice there's actually three connections on that. There's one connection over here. There's another larger cable uh, that actually goes right over here. And that's, um, so basically allows that either the house battery or the engine battery are gonna be put in parallel whenever there's a charging voltage, which is around 13.3 volts at a 12 volt battery bank. But what's interesting too is you'll notice there's actually a fuse uh, below that and right here. And that fuse is actually um, really important because it's yeah right over here. That yeah. fuse right there. That fuse acts as a protection to make sure because it's actually on a grounding connection, believe it or not. And that fuse acts as a way to make sure that the if ever there's a short on this circuit, 
um, your ACR is not going to be compromised because that wire is only gauge 10 and the, the, the positives are, they look like probably one aught. Um, so the positive distribution looks pretty good. I'm assuming there's a big welding cable here. And That's I, the positive for the, for, you, for the windlass? For the windlass. And yeah. it goes to a... Yeah, a circuit breaker right over here. Yeah, I, it's conveniently located here, but in an ideal scenario, this length of cable here is probably too long to be unfused. You know, um, if, if this was to code and we were building this boat, we would have another fuse over here because that length of cable to be unfused is unsafe in an ideal world. Now, I understand why you would do that because it's term... It's great if you're actually, you know, um, going somewhere and you want to make sure that your windlass doesn't accidentally get started or shorted while you're doing a, a voyage. You would, you know, just trip the breaker and now suddenly your windlass does, isn't energized. So it's in a convenient location for the operator, but there is a segment of that cable that is unfused. So on the engine battery here, what we're noticing is we've got a solar connection. And the solar connection is with a fuse, which is great. But notice also the stacking of the terminals. This connection should have been done on top. This is the starter connection. This has got probably a battery charger in the ECR. And this terminal should be, because it's the smallest, should be at the top. So that'd be something else to, to tackle. I also noticed the same thing over here with some other connection. And you can see there's no heat shrinker. We talked about that. That was applied. You've got the negative over here, and then the positive over here, but the heat shrink terminal, which is expensive, is actually, uh, no heat was applied to actually make it really, uh, I guess, heat not heat resistant, but, you know, protect against moisture. Another thing I want to bring to your attention is over here, um, the code, the ABYC code says that you can only stack really six connections on a terminal post. And actually on this one here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six connections. So uh, that's, that's definitely too many. I mean, over here you've got four, over here you've got four, and over here you've got only three. So um, that'd be something to look at, is there's too much stacking of terminals on that post. And that's about it. Um, now as you were looking down on the engine a little bit, the other stuff I'm looking at, especially on an on an engine or a boat of this age, is you want to make sure that you protect against chafe. Uh, you can see some sort of wiring harness over here. You can see it's loose, right? Just um, over time, and given enough time, wires actually will chafe through. And um, it's actually quite surprising how many, especially on an older boat like this, how many uh, wires are, were installed without a fuse because a wire is going to work without a fuse. The fuse is only to help you in the event of a short. And so it's really essential to have chafe guard or make sure that over time wires don't chafe through and then make a connection. And the engine, you got to remember, is, is common, right? Common ground. So if ever a positive chafes through and touches the engine block, which is negative, you're going to have a dead short, which would cause a fire. So I just ordered on eBay a new uh, wiring harness for the engine. Okay, there you go. All right, um, so that's the DC distribution of this boat. And then um, things that I'm seeing as we back away a little bit is stuff like this. I mean, stuff like that is obviously, it's not great. Um, and it certainly makes you wonder what does everything do, right? And so then you can see, for example, something that worries me right off the bat is something like this. You know, you've got a wire uh, that is simply gone but hanging, and you can see that's another loose end of it, and it's just sitting there. It's really essential over time, especially when you're going to be troubleshooting, to make sure that all loose wires, if they, if they can't be removed, they get labeled, and it's a really good way for an owner to stop worrying about certain things um, would be something to consider. Um, another point that I'm noticing over here is you can actually see this clamp has actually disintegrated itself, rusted. Um, and there's electrical wiring that's actually uh, mounted here. 
Um, and that looks to me like the wet exhaust for the boat. Yeah, that's the mixing elbow, it looks like, I think. I'm not sure. But um, this is going to get really hot when the engine runs. So you really don't want to have any electrical wiring connected to that because um, it's going to get, it's going to cause this wire to overheat. So you don't want to run any sort of electrical wiring on a wet exhaust.